Are you tired of your YouTube videos not getting any views? Well, consider TubeBuddy. I've used TubeBuddy for years to scale up my YouTube channel. Now we're sitting over 200,000 subscribers. TubeBuddy is a browser extension that offers a ton of built-in productivity and time-saving services to take your channel to the next level. Use my link in the description to get started with TubeBuddy and level up your channel. Wow. Teddy Atlas goes in on Canelo Alvarez's level of competition in his last fight last night with Abney Yildrum. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Make sure you smash the like button. Also, subscribe to my channel for the latest and greatest. Before I get started, you guys seen the commercial, TubeBuddy. If you're serious about growing your YouTube channel, use TubeBuddy. Use my link in the description. It does help the channel continue to grow. I started off with zero subscribers and scaled my business up, and we now have over 200,000. TubeBuddy is definitely a browser extension resource that I use ongoing and daily. Now, let's get into it. Canelo fought, it was definitely a lackluster fight, you know, from the opinions of myself and many others. And let's hear what Teddy Atlas had to say during the fight. He says, for me, just three punches required tonight for Canelo. Jab, as always, the tone setter, uppercut because Yildrum eats them and the body work as Yildrum is right in front of you. So this was before the fight. Atlas was given his kind of keys to victory, if you will. He says, watching Canelo warm up, only thing possible for Yildrum is a left hook as Canelo drops his hand a bit to throw the right uppercut, but that's a lottery ticket. Might be the same odds. So basically, he's stating what we knew Yildrum was the underdog. He says, Yildrum is game, but slow and right there where Canelo can put water in the basement and land the uppercut. I believe at any time, let's see, which definitely happened. He definitely landed at uppercut. Um, Atlas goes on to say, Yildrum's style involves his head being in close, which can mean possible clashes, which can mean cuts. Obviously, it didn't go that far, so it never got to that. All this chatter of what Yildrum has to do, but honestly, maybe best bet is start fast as Canelo sometimes takes his time early get past round four and if there's a cut maybe get lucky and there was none of that because he retired on the stool but obviously this is stuff before the actual fight teddy atlas continues bad news is the undercard was not good and now they are taking too long to get in the ring but the very bad news might be that this is all longer than the fight so you guys can see this is teddy atlas's thoughts all before the actual fight, he's kind of predicting what will happen. And then he sees him walking out. He says, Yildrum looks dry. That can mean a slow start and vo vulnerability early. And I noticed that too. He didn't look like he warmed up. He almost looked like he didn't want to be here. He said, I think Buffer has aged with this weight. It was like they were waiting for the PBC Fox card to end the, the Anthony Durrell fight because it was timed right after that, that left. Um, Atlas continues, Yildrum's body looks soft, a bit soft. Did I say put water in the basement? Canelo definitely did that with the body shots. It says, if you don't throw punches, Yildrum, you can survive longer, but you cannot win. Which is exactly what we've seen. As the old timers would say, Yildrum is harder to miss than he is to hit. <laughs> so nothing nice about the fight and rightfully so. One thing is clear, these mandatory number ones ain't what they are supposed to be. So he, he's saying like, you know, it wasn't that. Did I say water in the basement? It's a flood. Gloves of Yildrum blocked his own vision. So he's making rookie mistakes from Teddy Atlas's account. And he says, when is the next UFC fight? So he's basically checking out because this was horrible. So he's worried about the next UFC fight. Wow. Now, this one is important. That wasn't even a sparring session. Truth be spoken, you would send him home in camp because you'd get nothing out of it. Canelo Yildrum. Wow. So he says that wasn't even a good sparring session that we just witnessed. And if you had someone like that that was helping you prepare for your fight and you had him in camp, you would truthfully send him home and kick him out of camp 
so as to not waste your time because you're not going to get any better and you would be getting no benefit out of it just keeping them around, which is true. Yildrum literally did nothing. Now, that's sad, bro. It says, anyone calculate how much Canelo just made per minute? He says, the commentators, so the DAZN commentators, which in my opinion have the worst commentators in the game, he says, the commentators are speculating what it will take to beat Canelo. I have an idea. Start with better opposition. Hashtag DAZN Canelo Yildrum. I love Canelo, but in these types of fights, he can just do whatever he wants as if he were in the gym hitting the bag. Now, I made a video about it. Edgar Berlanga said the same thing. So the funny thing is the Canelo man fans are still trying to justify it. So you have Edgar Berlanga. People try, they try to attack him because he said Canelo fought a punching bag. You basically have Teddy Atlas saying he looks dry. He looks ill-prepared. You know, it's going to be like hitting the lottery to hit a home run shot. You could try to drown him late but his body looks dry and Canelo has a good uppercut, blah, blah, blah. And now he's saying, I love Canelo, but in these type of fights, he could just do whatever he wants as if you were in the gym hitting the bag. So basically saying heavy bag. So saying it's not comparable to a, a real fight. It's not really something you can um, gauge. So again, the walls are closing in. I've said the same thing. Like, listen, I, I said this stuff to you. I said, it's hard to gauge. We know Canelo is talented, yes. But it's very hard to gauge what the real situation is if you have zero adversity, zero resistance, and an opponent that you're already better than. And we all knew that going into the fight. Like, it'd be one thing, even if you fought an inexperienced guy like Edgar Berlanga, who hasn't, you know, been in the game as long as Canelo, he's young, but he's heavy handed. So I think even guys like that or Zordo Ramirez, who's been out of the ring for quite some time. You know, up until recently, he had he did have one fight in Texas. But these are all better fights for Canelo. Needless to say, David Benavidez, Jamal Charlo, uh, Bevo, who's been calling them out, Better Bev, Demetrius Andre, and the list goes on. Chris Eubank, who called him out. And this is who Canelo chooses to fight. So, I mean, it, it's a bad look because the whole fight seems to be ridiculed. I don't know. I guess the zone, maybe they enjoy uh, boxing being ridiculed. But it's not working. When Canelo fought Kovalev, boxing was ridiculed. Boxing had to take a back seat to the UFC card. Shout out to Dana White UFC. Um, the BMF card with Jorge Masvidal and Nate Diaz. DAZN must have felt, even though their leadership, DAZN leadership said they didn't feel intimidated by the UFC card being on the same day because DAZN said there's not really a crossover audience, but the day of the fight or the day before, they decided to wait for the main event so as to not conflict with a UFC card, which is uncanny. You never seen Floyd Mayweather really wait for another sporting event to conclude before he went up. And, you know, just fights like this, you could say it's a mandatory. Canelo's the face of boxing. You know, he was the franchise champion. He got out of his last mandatory. Uh, Jamal Charlo his mandatory was also Sergey Devonchenko another fight that for some reason didn't happen so what a coincidence that him and the WBC there's pictures of Mauricio Suleiman with Avni Yildrum's very own people so it's just ironic to me that you have you have a fight that just has to happen and they're they're saying there's no way this is Avni look this is Mauricio Suleiman. That's Avni, that's Avni Yildrum's manager. And he's calling Mauricio Suleiman Poppy, like Papa or something, like saying they're like real close. Look, he in Mexico City. So no wonder the politics allowed. Look, this is them. This is Avni Yildrum's team and people. It says visiting the WBC president in Mexico. So they went out to Mexico. So it's not a surprise that Avni Yildrum was given the opportunity. Look, they look all buddy buddy. It says the great president of the WBC here in Cancun, you know. So when the whole world is like, yo, how did this guy get the mandatory opposition? How did he get a shot with the, you know, the great who they're calling face of boxing pound for pound? Maybe this picture lets you know. And maybe that's why Canelo Alvarez 
is his event is being ridiculed by the likes of Edgar Berlanga because you're going to always be judged by your peers. When I said it, y'all said I was hating. So now we got to do videos of what's going on and what the wave is. And it's not just me saying it. Teddy Atlas is saying exactly what I've been telling you. And boom, WBC. This is from August of last year. Canelo Alvarez wasn't ordered to fight Abney Yildirim. He requested it. So all the people making up excuses and acting like the WBC and Team Canelo weren't politicking to make this Yildirim fight come into fruition like there was no other option he had. Good luck to that. It was, it was a bad fight. You got people like Teddy Atlas, who's been in boxing since I don't know when he started, but I know definitely in the 80s with Mike Tyson and things like that. And he's saying, when's the next UFC fight? Because it's such a turnoff. And shout out to this dude, Brandon, who sent me this. Right. We got eyes on every street corner in America covering this boxing stuff. It's just a it's a bad it's a bad look. So when people are like, hey, man, how did how did Yildirim get this opportunity with Canelo? They said he got two point five million. He got two point five million dollars on the zone to fight Canelo to do nothing and quit. And, and you got all these hungry fighters out here who would for half of that, a fraction of that, you know, five hundred thousand try to really take your head off. This was a bad detrimental look. And the zone keeps dealing these these vicious blows to the sport that they're trying to get in and now Canelo's fighting yet another European fighter in Billy Joe Saunders and it's already predetermined so best of luck to Canelo and Eddie Hearn we'll see how that works out for him so far it looks like people um are kind of falling off the the bandwagon with these selections when you got guys like David Benavidez and others who would push him even Teddy Atlas in this comment is saying the commentators keep saying and speculating, what will it take to beat Canelo? He says, I have an idea. Start with better opposition. You know, Canelo is a terrific fighter with great talent. But at the same time, if he's not in there opposite someone that you also feel has great skill and great talent and great defense or heavy hands or any attributes to rival him, the fights are always going to look like Canelo's last three fights. Boom. You never know. Drop your thoughts in the comment section, we working. So if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel, you can show your appreciation by going to the PayPal donate button or the YouTube support button. And you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video. Much more to come. Thank you guys for your support. Boxing Ego, the future of boxing.